Hi, this is Channing from AccuCraft. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed our other videos, such as the one on how to fire a small butane live steam locomotive. Today we're going to go over a alcohol-fired model with a tender that has an axle pump. And I'm going to go over the differences and the basics of alcohol firing. The model we're using to demonstrate today is the AccuCraft Aster B1 Thompson. This is a British locomotive in 132 scale. This is the tender, which has the alcohol tank and the water tank back here. This is the locomotive end, which has the cab and the cab controls. It has safety valves. It has the boiler, a smoke box, smoke stack, and the driver wheels. On this locomotive, the oil lubricator is in the front. And now I'll go over the cab controls. So there's a few differences in the cab controls on a model like this compared to a smaller model, which only has a throttle and a gas valve. This one, it also has a throttle valve or the steam valve, which controls how much steam you're using and how fast you're going to go. This is called the blower valve, which I'll explain more in detail later. Here we have the pressure gauge. Behind that is the water sight glass gauge. Atta below that, and in some models, there's the blowdown valve. And the blowdown valve is useful when you have an air bubble in the water gauge giving you a false reading. To use it, if you're under pressure and you've stopped the model and you can't tell how much water you have, you just open this very quickly and close it and it'll clear out the water in the gauge and then you'll get a new reading. This is the reverser. This is how you set the direction of the model. In some cases it's a wheel like this that you have to turn and in some cases it's a bar that you just flip into the forward or the reverse position. This is the bypass valve, which I'll also explain uh, later in this video. On the tender side, we have water, the water feed line, the fuel line, and the water return line. The water feed line usually has something that attaches it to the locomotive because this is how you get the water into the pressurized boiler. Whereas the water return line does not need anything because there's no extra pressure. And this is the drawbar which connects the tender to the locomotive. So I'm going to show you the bottom of the locomotive. So this is the underside of the locomotive. You see the alcohol burner which is inside of the firebox and that goes over and it connects to that alcohol fuel line on the tender. In the front, or in the middle, you have the axle pump which is on one of the axles of the driver and what this does is that every rotation of the wheel it pumps a little bit of water from the tender into the boiler. And this lets you run for a lot longer than you can normally do without it. How you control the axle pump is with the bypass valve. This valve is either closed or open or somewhere in between. When it's closed, the water that this pumps goes into the boiler. When you open it, the water goes back into the tender. You can tell that the pump is working because if you have this open you can see water going back in the tender and when you close it the water will stop going back in the tender and you should see the sight glass start to slowly fill. Sometimes when you're running you can actually get to just the right point in the middle where the water going into the boiler and the water you use to make steam is about the same. 
and you don't even have to stop the locomotive to refill water. Now I'm going to talk about the alcohol that you use for this model. You'll want something called ethanol or denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol is ethanol that has additives to make it poisonous to drink. Now, usually you can find this in a hardware store, but in some places it's become more difficult, like in California. And I find that you can still get this, even online, if you look for a fireplace fuel. And this is bioethanol. It, I find it to be a pretty clean burning fuel, a little bit more expensive than the denatured alcohol. You want to keep your alcohol sealed and covered at all times because they can evaporate and they can also draw moisture from the air. And if you have an, a bottle that's been sitting around too long, you may have too much water in here, which will affect how your model performs. Now make sure you keep your fuel also properly labeled. Some people like to add a few drops of water, uh, food coloring to your fuel so that you don't mistake it for water. Because if you add the water into the boiler, that's very dangerous. And if you add water into your alcohol tank, it's not so dangerous, but you won't, you'll mess up your wicks. One thing about alcohol is that when you're outside in the daylight, you may not see the fire. So you want to be careful that you're not melting your ties or damaging your locomotive. And also when you fuel your tank, is to, you may want to do it away from other locomotives and away from the track you're running on. Because if you spill it, and a locomotive goes by that's on, that has a f burner going, it could ignite the whole thing. It's a good idea to fill off to the side and maybe move your locomotive before you start lighting it. So let's talk about the alcohol burner, which goes in the firebox. They usually look like this. They have a few pots that you put the wicks into. How best to put the wicks in is more art than science, I think. And it could take a bit of trial and error to get the best arrangement for your model. Bad, bad wick arrangement is a usual cause of poor running, poor steam generation on an alcohol fire locomotive. Rule of thumb is that you don't want them to be too tight. You want them to be just loose enough that they can move if you pull them, but they won't fall out if you turn it over. The ones closer to the alcohol tank can be a little bit tighter than the ones in the front, uh, in, in closer to the front of the locomotive, so that you have a little bit of more even flame. So now we have our model connected and we're about ready to start fueling it and getting ready for steaming. And I want to go over the checklist that all live steam models should follow uh, when you want to get ready for steaming. Number one is lubrication. You want to lubricate most of the small moving parts on your model. And you just use a light machine oil to do that. Don't use your cylinder steam oil. Number two is the water. And on this model, you don't actually have a direct cap for the boiler. The only way to get water in is through the tender. Using this hand pump to start with. You add the water into the water tank. You can pump the water in. And when you do that, you want to make sure your bypass valve is closed or the water is just going to go back into the tender. And once you have your sight glass about three quarter of the way full, you can move on to the next one. Number three is steam oil. That goes into the front here. Number four is your fuel. In this case, alcohol. 
that goes into this alcohol tank. And the alcohol tank has two tubes on the bottom. One is for fuel to come out, and the other one is an air vent, which keeps the fuel from flowing above this line. This is the valve that controls how much fuel you want to flow. And this is the cap that you add the fuel into. You can use a small bottle to squeeze it into or a funnel. When you're adding fuel, you want to make sure this valve is closed. And when you are ready for the fuel to go into the burner, you want to make sure that this cap is closed tightly. The whole system to keep the water uh, fuel from overflowing depends on this being sealed. And then the last thing you need for this type of model is a draft fan. This is a small battery operated fan which goes on the smokestack. And what this does is it creates draft. All alcohol fired models and most models that have a boiler with a firebox need something called draft. And draft is what pulls the heat from the burner through the boiler flues and out through the smoke box. And when you start on a cold locomotive, the draft fan does that. After about 10 PSI, you have some pressure. You can take off the blower uh, fan and you can open your blower valve. And that's taking the steam from the boiler that you've already generated, releasing it into the smoke box, creating a small vacuum uh, which pulls, which will then pull the heat through. And when you're running and the model is in motion, you should turn off your blower valve because the exhaust of the actual locomotive also creates that draft. Now whenever you want to stop your locomotive for whatever reason, such as adding water or fuel, you want to turn off your throttle and open that blower valve. Otherwise, the fire could come out from the size of the firebox and damage your locomotive, and you won't be generating enough steam. Sometimes, if you're running the model uh, very slowly on purpose, you need to crack the blower a little bit to keep the fire strong enough. So I think we're ready now to show how to get this thing fired up. So let's start with that checklist again. Number one, lubrication. Number two, water. Number three, steam oil. Number four, fuel. And then number five was your draft fan on this locomotive. So I have the fuel in, I open the valve half a turn, you can see the fuel going through, you can wait a little bit for the wicks to absorb that, that alcohol, you make sure your blower valve is closed and your throttle is closed and you're in the direction you want to go, and you turn on the fan, and while it's on, you can light from the sides of your model under the firebox. You can either use a barbecue lighter or a wick, a piece of wick on the end of a wire that you light and that you dip in the alcohol and light. If you're not sure if all your pots were lit, sometimes you can use a small dental mirror to look. And uh, sometimes you can take off the fan for a second which will stop pulling the, fu uh, the fire through, that will sometimes light any pots that didn't light yet. Put the fan back on, you wait maybe five or ten minutes, and you'll start seeing the pressure rise. And like I said, once you get to about at least 10, 15, 20 psi, take off the fan, open your blower, and you'll see and you'll feel the steam coming out and the pressure is gonna rise a lot faster than with the fan. 
Once you get to about 65 PSI, these safeties are going to release their steam. And then you're ready to go. You can open the throttle, close your blower, and sometimes the model will start just moving and it could go a little fast. You should hold on to it. But sometimes on a cold locomotive, the cylinders have condensed water in them, which will keep the water, uh, keep the loco from running right away. And the easy way to solve that is just to push it back and forth a little bit as you open the throttle. On some models, there are valves called drain cocks, which will release that water in the beginning. And then you need to close those before you continue running. So while you're running, you want to keep an eye on your pressure gauge and you want to keep an eye on that water gauge. You also want to check now and then the water tank because if this runs out of water, you won't be pumping anything in. You can add water while the model is running. Just pour it into the back of this. Or you can stop it and pour it in. Now this model, and most of them like this with, with a tank about this size, can run up to an hour. And if you want to extend that even more because you're run out of fuel, you can do that if you close this valve, pull it out, add your fuel separately, and then drop it back in. Some models have the tank connected to the tender uh, permanently. On those, you probably shouldn't do that because you have a fire going and adding fuel to a model with the fire is not safe. So now you're running and you run 40 minutes, an hour, and you're ready to stop and, and shut it down. You just have to turn off your fuel. And you can let it go a little bit longer because there's still going to be alcohol in the wicks. And then after a few more minutes, you can stop the model, close the throttle, with the blower closed, you need to extinguish your flame. And there's two ways to do that. One way is to just give it a quick blow through the smokestack. The other way is to use a CO2 cartridge, which you can get for refilling bicycle tires. And a quick puff of that will also extinguish the flame. Too much of a puff and you might damage your wicks though. So you have to be careful with that too. Once you've stopped the model and you've taken out the, f the flame, you can also use the leftover pressure in your boiler to get the water out. And the way you do that is you move your model somewhere where you don't mind the water getting out and you can open that blowdown valve, the pressure in your boiler will actually empty out that water while, they're, while you're cooling down. Once you're full, fully cooled down, you can disconnect your model, you can clean it, you can take out the excess oil from the lubricator, you should empty out your alcohol tank, empty out your tender, and then lubricate your moving parts again. And now you're ready to put it on the shelf or in the storage or wait for your next run. Uh, that covers the basics of an alcohol-fired locomotive. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. Hope you like our video and subscribe for more. Thank you.